It's great to have all of you here tonight. We welcome you uh, warmly. And uh, my granddaughter's warming up for singing. And that's what we're looking forward to tonight. We're so thankful for uh, Geneva College coming uh, all this way uh, in the form of new song. Uh, this, this group has been performing for 47 years. They've done new song out of Geneva College in Beaver Falls, PA. And um, the uh, singing of Psalms is a rich tradition at Geneva College and at the Reformed Presbyterian Church of North America. That's um, the RPCNA and another t term, uh, Covenanters. Uh, so that's a rich tradition. But actually, in the 1800s, all of our churches, Baptist, Congregational, Reformed, Presbyterian, for the most part, sung the Psalms. That was the diet of singing. And so it's a, a great reminder tonight uh, of the rich heritage we have in the book of Psalms. And uh, one thing to think about as you listen, it has the emotions for the Christian life. But also, if you want to see the full range of the emotions of our Savior, Christ, you look in the Psalms for his emotional life as he suffered as our Messiah and uh, King. So we're so thankful you came. And after, uh, there's skits in the middle of the program. And then we're so thankful for the director, Lindsay Schaefer, who will speak about Geneva at that in the middle of the program. And then we'll take up a love offering right after Lindsay's done before the, the last third or, or half of the program. So thank you for coming. We're so thankful. And I think we can praise God with an anticipation applause. Let's do that. Sing to the Lord of your soul. He has done marvelous things. He has done marvelous things. Be glad, rejoice and be glad. Rejoice, rejoice and sing. Oh, sing to the Lord of your soul. Sing to the Lord of your soul. He has done marvelous things. He has done marvelous things. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. His wonderful mercy proclaim. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul and all. Before we begin, 
begin, we would like to introduce ourselves. My name is Jason McCown. I am a senior music major from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. My name is Asa Sell. I'm a sophomore chemical engineering major from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. My name is Sarah Beth Schock. I am a junior English major from Franktown, Colorado. I'm James Hinkleman. I am a junior biology major from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Hannah Fortin. I'm a junior business major from Darlington, Pennsylvania. I'm Joey Tritt. I'm a junior music and psychology major from North Swickley, Pennsylvania. My name is Molly Wright. I am a sophomore elementary and special education major from Cazenovia, New York. I'm August Denswall. I'm a junior biomedical engineering major from Charlestown, West Virginia. My name is Bria McJesney. I'm a junior biology secondary education major from Eden Valley, Pen Eden Valley Pennsylvania. <laughs> and this is our director, Lindsay Schaefer. Our concert for you this evening will consist of three parts, starting with psalms, sung a cappella, and then we have a couple skits, as the pastor said earlier. And then that will be followed by hymns and contemporary worship songs. We will be singing many musical arrangements of psalms from the Bible, for the psalms provide us with hymns of lamentation, petition, thanksgiving, and more. They are the words of God given to us that we might sing and pray them back to him. They have been sung by God's people since the time of Moses. What a reminder of the universal church that we are members of. As an Israelite, Jesus grew up singing the psalms as his family worshipped in the temple and studied the word of God. The psalms give many prophecies that were fulfilled in him, the perfect sacrifice that gives them eternal salvation. We now sing these words to God through Jesus Christ, who is representing us before the Father. The psalms give us the perfect words of God through which to express joy, grief, and praise, as they remind us of God's character and his relationship with us. And our first psalm for you this evening is Psalm 19. And I'd ask you to hold your applause just to the end, and that way we can focus on the psalm one at a time and reflect and meditate. Thank you. Thank you. The skies above declare the glory of our God.
26 portrays God as a refuge that we can cling to when trouble comes our way. It's Psalm 46. <laughs> refocuses our eyes on the one who sits enthroned on high, who is like the Lord our God who stoops down to look on the heaven and the earth. Praise the Lord, sing praise the Lord, praise him servants of the Lord. May the Lord's name blessed be. He the 
splendor of his holiness. holiness. For the Lord is great, that all, that all creation sing. Let all creation rejoice, to me turn the glory of God. Oh, 
robins that do his work, new clouds far hail and snow, fills low and high, and cedars tall, and cedars tall be straight and small, and birds that fly. Let all the people praise, and kings of every land, let all their voices raise, who judge and give command. By young and old, by girl and boy, by girl and boy his name with joy should be extolled. The Lord alone be praised above the earth and skies, he for his saints has raised. King to rule on high, so praise so our call, O Israel, O Israel, who near him dwell, O praise the Lord. That marks the end of the first half of our concert. I guess you're all in class now. <laughs> Music is a great way to exhort one another and praise the Lord. Next, we want to take a few minutes to expand on and demonstrate some of the ways that these words might be applied to our lives. In these skits, you will see people who have similar desires and personalities as we do, and temptations that all of us on this stage struggle with. Some of the characters will seem a bit outrageous, but we all have the same problem in our hearts, sin. And that problem has the same remedy, salvation in Jesus Christ.
to Last Chance Pawn Shop. Can I help you? Got a lot of interesting stuff here. Yeah, you never know what people will pawn. I bet some of this stuff has quite a story. Yeah, I've seen some desperate people. When folks hit rock bottom, they come see me. Every item has a story, and every story has a price tag. Must be hard seeing people at their lowest all the time. It's a living. So, uh, what's the story with this guitar? Oh, that old thing? Some punk comes in here, all out of breath, wants to get rid of the thing, and fast. I don't ask questions if there was space on the shelf, so why not? It looks pretty beat up. Everything is sold as is. How much? Fifty dollars. And it's worth a lot more, you know. That's maple. Actually, that's Indian rosewood, and the top is spruce. See, I told you it was worth a lot more. And see that? Pearl inlay bindings. Very rare. Gold tuning gear, ebony bridge, koi fish decoration. I guess I didn't get a good look at it. These tone woods create the perfect warm sound. And the top spruce is made of the highest quality you can find. It's expertly crafted. Now that I think about it, that price was our semi-annual sale price, which only happens once a year, so unfortunately, you just missed it. The normal price is $300. And see that? The maker even hand-signed it on the inside. Where? See, right there, up under the trussing. No kidding. Individually numbered it, too. How can you read that? The number is so small in that signature. I can't make out the name. Oh, I know the name well. $1,000, and I will not take anything less. I'll take it. You will? You gave up too easily. I would have taken anything. You must really love that guitar. Of course I do. I'm the one who made it. <laughs> As Psalm 139 states, God created us and knows us intimately. Though we wander from him and sin against him repeatedly, he paid the highest price to rescue us, that is, death itself. Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. dinner. 
Is that okay with you? Mi casa, su casa. Um, so tomorrow I was hoping we could go to the Schlecky training in the morning and then listen to the keynote speaker in the afternoon. Is that good with you? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Hey, do you have any idea what the keynote is speaking on? I don't know, probably data-driven decision-making or technology in the classroom, something like that. Uh, what are you doing? Just measuring to see how much room I have for the abstract painting I bought for this, for the, the color. Uh, you bought an abstract painting. Why? Not an abstract art man, huh? Uh, that's just weird. Why are you getting it for the hotel room? Because the, the, the decor in here is terrible. Hotel art is the worst. You know what I mean? And if we're going to be living here for three days, I've got to make it as comfortable as possible. Okay, sweet yourself. Oh, you know, what size TV do you think this is? I don't know. You've got tape measure. Touche. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm just I'm just gonna get on Amazon, get us a new one of these. A new one for our, our hotel room. Well, yeah, Amazon's got drones now. They can just drone a TV in, and a couple of hours will be set. That's not the point. We don't need a new TV. This one's fine. No, no, no. We are not going to spend three days squinting. I care about our eyes. But you, you know what? I'll just get a, a projector and a couple of lounge chairs. It'll be like our own theater. You know, you know what? Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay. Hi, hi. Is this Home Depot? Yeah. I'd like an estimate on renovating a bathroom. The shower is really out of date, and I'd like to bring it into the 21st century. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on just a second. What time do we have a break tomorrow? At 10. Would 10.30 tomorrow work? Awesome. Yes. Okay. You know what? Do you estimate balconies too? Yeah, yeah. I'd like an estimate on one of those. I love to drink my morning coffee outside with a cool breeze. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Perfect. Yes. Okay. You've got to be joking, right? There's no way you're going to spend this much money renovating a hotel room. We're only going to be in for three days. Well, I don't know how much it's going to be. That, that's why I need the estimate. We're literally only going to be here to sleep. I mean, we're going to be in lectures all day. Sleep, duh. I almost forgot. You see, yesterday I pre-ordered a posturepedic. I hate hotel beds. And, oh, oh. You know, when they bring it here, can you help me get this old thing out of here? Um, no. <laughs> no. Excuse me. This is crazy. This is insane. This is a hotel room. It's temporary. This is not your home. Well, it is right now. For three days. Exactly. That's like an eternity. As crazy as this seems, I think many of us live this way. We spend all of our time, money, and energy trying to make our lives as comfortable as possible. We live as if this world is our home. Yet the Bible is incredibly clear. We are merely sojourners on this earth, aliens in a foreign land. This is not our home. Our lives on earth are no more than a breath, a mist, a vapor, here today and gone tomorrow. So let us fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.18 
being seen, it's such a desire for each of us. Jesus saw many in his earthly ministry, from the pressing crowds to the tiniest child. He saw them. He saw me at the well. He thirsted and asked me, a Samaritan, for a drink. Me, from a different country, different race, different from him. But he saw me. He called me out of my sin, and instead of leaving me thirsty, he offered me a fountain of living water, springing up to eternal life. Grace, free now from the bonds I had created. He saw me at my worst. I was caught in adultery, and I was about to be stoned by an angry mob. The crowd was screaming, and my end was near. He wasn't looking at me, but he saw me. He challenged my accusers, let anyone who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. They started walking away one by one, starting with the oldest among them. He saw straight through to their hearts, just as guilty as my own. As they walked away, I was left there standing alone with him. He had no stone, and as he looked up, he offered me a second chance, a way out, sin no more. I walked away alive. He saw me, an expert in the law. I stood up to test him. I asked him, what must I do to gain eternal life? When he asked me about the law, I answered, love the Lord your God with everything you have, and love your neighbor as yourself. He told me I had answered correctly, but it wasn't enough for my ego. I tried to test him further. And who is my neighbor? I asked. The story he then told me an act of pure mercy and love of a man who saw his enemy in need and showed him kindness rather than ignoring his plight. Jesus then told me, Go, do the same. Love unconditionally, even your enemies. I was taken aback. I thought I was testing him, but Jesus was testing me. Testing me. <clears throat> he saw right through me in my self-righteousness. He saw me. I was there at the treasury in the temple. I still grieved the loss of my husband, knowing that without him, my life would be so hard. My money was dwindling. And there was no family nearby. My life looked bleak. But my God has provided. My God is providing. And my God will provide. And if everything I can give him is just this, is my faith represented in these small coins, then so be it. I gave in faith. And as I walked away, I saw what he saw. He saw me in the house of Simon. Jesus had been invited there to feast with the righteous. I was far from fitting in. The others in the house knew my poor reputation and objected to my presence. I fell at Jesus' feet, weeping, washing his feet with my tears and pouring perfume on them. The others saw only my waywardness. Jesus saw me and forgave my sin. He said to me, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. The others marveled, Who is this man who even forgives sins? Couldn't they see? He was the one we had been waiting for, the Messiah. He saw me. I was a leper, polluted, separated from everyone else by the law. Despair was my daily companion. Then I saw him. Should I chance it? I knew he had the power to heal, but would he be willing to help? Yes, he was willing to help. He touched me, me, the unclean one, the one that no one would touch, now made clean in body and soul. He saw me, a thief, a criminal. My friend and I were caught after our last crime spree. Our victims testified against us. Locked up, no more chances from the court, no more freedom. Oh, how their lives were shattered by our actions. We were found guilty, condemned to die in the worst way possible. And now my friend and I hang, and in between us, this man, Jesus. My friend begins, begins to berate him. I can't stand it. I say to him, us? We deserve this, but him? There's no wrong in him. Leave him alone. And then it got silent. And I looked over. 
Why was he here? It's almost as if he let this happen to himself. I felt my life seeping away. And in my last moments, I cried out, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your glory. And then he saw me, saw not a lost cause, but a repentant heart. And he gave me the gift of life, life with him. Mercy's door open, free at last. He saw me when, when I wasn't willing to see him. Those who saw him in the garden, telling us with such emotion that they had seen him. Him, risen again. It could not be. They must have seen something else, someone else. I declared I would not believe until I could put my hand in his side, fingers in the wounds on his hands. Then, a few days later, he was there, fully him. I fell to my knees, declaring, my Lord and my God. His words challenging me to believe without seeing, to believe without hearing, to believe that the one, the Son of God, is with us, now and forevermore. These and so many more were truly seen by Jesus. They experienced his love, his compassion, and his deep desire for all to be set free. He gave me living water to drink. He didn't condemn me. He challenged me to love others unconditionally as he does me. He said my faith had saved me. He made me clean in body and soul. He told me that I would be in paradise with him. He restored my faith. He saw me. He saw me. He saw me. And he sees you.
But I've been in the years since I've graduated, I've become more and more grateful for the other things that I learned at Geneva, whether in the classroom or else. Um, really just how to live as a believer in my home, in my community, how to serve in my church, and how to really do every day, the everyday details of life um, in service to the Lord and my neighbor. So I know that's something I'm really grateful for in my Geneva education, but really the best way to get to know a college is through her current students. And that's why I do nine of them. So please um, ask them questions about their experience, even if you don't know anyone that's looking at colleges, you yourself are not of that age. I personally think it's really encouraging as fellow believers to hear what the Lord is doing in their lives and, and how much they're growing and changing what they're asking for. So we do have a table. Please come back if you'd like any materials to take with you, but they would really love to just share their stories with you. It looks like they're about ready to go, so I'm going to hand it back over. And I think you were talking about giving offering, so yes. don't come in until the afternoon. All right. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yes, if the ushers come forward, we do want to take up a love offering and as an expression of thanks for the labors and uh, the joy of what we've witnessed and continue to enjoy tonight. So let's take up that offering at this time. Thank you. Brothers, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the, the remaining trip. Anyone else didn't get the plate? Okay, there's some in the middle there. Let's we'll get we'll get you guys and then we'll pray. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the young young people of our church who are here tonight, able to witness. Uh, the joy which worship and singing your praises brings to their peers. And so we do pray that you will continue uh, to bless New Song and bless the preaching of the word in all the churches in the area around Geneva College and on-campus ministry. Please continue to grant joy in serving you uh, in, through this institution. And thank you for this music. And we pray your blessing on the re remainder of our evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. Our next song is called Freedom. Now, the story goes that New Song was driving on the interstate in their van, and they came across another singing group in a van of their own, and while they're both still driving on the road, they decide to pass CDs. Now, they realize that this was a horrible idea, very unsafe, thank you, and uh, they pulled over to the side of the road, and as singing groups do, they exchange songs. And uh, Freedom has been a New Song tradition for over 30 years ever since. It tells us about the freedom that we have in Jesus and the hope that we have in his return. Jesus is coming, oh yeah. 
Riverside is a traditional spiritual that's inspired by the words found in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, which says, And he shall judge between the nations. He shall decide disputes between the peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and they shall study war no longer.